Hello friends, so today we are going to talk about the method of calculation of wavelength of monochromatic light as well as the method for calculating the radius of curvature of lens which is used by Newton Ring's method. <music> Starting with the concept of calculation of wavelength of monochromatic light which is used as a source. So for that we make an experimental arrangement in which case we talk about the planed convex surface. That is when we are placing a plane, plano convex lens on a plane glass plate the surface has to be properly cleaned. And second thing the plano convex lens which we are making use of as it has large radius of curvature. So for calculation of the wavelength of monochromatic light which is used as a source, we are considering the arrangement that was done in the Newton Rings method that is the placement of plano convex lens which has to be properly cleaned and placed on the plane glass plate. Secondly, the plano convex lens should have a large radius of curvature. Secondly, in this case we place one more glass plate that is this glass plate G which is kept at an angle of 45 degree with the vertical. So with the vertical line we are placing this glass plate at the 45 degree. So that means we are placing one more glass plate that is a plain glass plate which is making an angle of 45 degree with the vertical line and this is placed because why we are making use of this glass plate is because we are going to require the normal incidence of the light on this air film. So to get the normal incidence of the light, we require one more glass plate that is G which is kept at an angle of 45 degree with the vertical. So whenever I place a glass plate at an angle of 45 degree with the vertical, it is used to make the normal incidence. Secondly, we can make use of a convex or you can say condensing lens over here. So we are making use of a condensing lens just after the source of light that is sodium lamp. Why we are making use of this condensing lens is that so that it can collect maximum amount of light and allow it to fall on the glass plate G. So whenever we are talking about the arrangement we are taking the arrangement similar to the Newton rings that is a plano convex lens which is completely properly cleaned and placed on the plane glass plate and secondly the plano convex lens should have a large radius of curvature. Then we have placed a glass plate G which is making an angle of 45 degree with the vertical and that is used for making the ray of light to have a normal incidence. Secondly we have condensing lenses which are used for maximum collection of light and which is allowed to fall on the glass plate G. Now the light which is coming from the condensing lens placed after the source is allowed to pass or fall on the glass plate G and out of this some ray of light is going to pass through the normal incidence and get reflected towards the plano convex lens and some of the light will move in the upward direction. So this is what we get that due to the glass plate G, the rays of light which are coming in this direction will get reflected with a normal incidence on the plano convex lens and actually the light which are moving towards the plano convex lens will fall on the air film which is present in between the two arrangement that is plano convex lens on the plane glass plate and when the light with the normal incidence goes into the air film present between the two there is a formation of Newton rings or we can say the interference pattern and once there is a formation of interference pattern that is of alternate bright and dark bands we get interference pattern and that can be seen with the help of the low power microscopes which are used in this particular position. So we can say that Newton rings are being formed as a result of interference which is occurring 
with the rays which are getting reflected from the top surface of the air film and the bottom surface of the air film. So as we can see that between the two surfaces that is pleno convex lens and the glass plate there is a presence of air film and the light which is incident normally on it the ray which is getting reflected from the top as well as bottom of the air film they both are allowed to interfere with each other and once they are interfering this will lead to the formation of interference pattern in the form of newton rings why in the form of newton rings because the whole arrangement or the calculation is done with the help of newton rings method next is as we are aware with the help of newton rings method we had already done this calculation that the effective path difference is given by the formula 2 mu t cos r plus theta plus lambda by 2 and we are aware mu indicates the refractive index of the air film as we are aware that the refractive index of air film is taken to be 1. Secondly t indicates the thickness of the film whereas at this particular point that is at the point of contact the thickness will be 0 of the air film but as we move in the outward direction the thickness of the air film will go on decreasing in this direction as well as this direction so t is a variable quantity r indicates the angle of refraction theta indicates the angle of film at any point that means if i keep on changing my point the angle of film will change so theta is indicating the angle of film at any point and obviously lambda indicates the wavelength of monochromatic light which is used as a source now as we have obtained newton ring which consists of alternate bright and dark rings as we have obtained this newton ring with the help of reflected light that is why the newton ring will be obtained as alternate bright and dark rings with the central spot to be dark because that's how it looks for the reflected system so as we consider dn has diameter of the nth dark ring then as per newton rings concept we are aware that dn that is diameter of nth dark ring is nothing but equal to 4 n r lambda this is we have done this calculation many times in the previous derivations this is the condition written for diameter of any dark ring so we are writing this as dn square is equal to n r lambda as we are aware dn indicates the diameter of the nth dark ring n indicates the order of dark ring that is which order are we talking about first order dark ring or second order dark ring r indicates the radius of curvature of the lens which is being used in this particular arrangement and lambda indicates the wavelength of monochromatic light now suppose if i consider one more dark ring in that particular newton ring and that dark ring is nothing but considered to be the n plus pth dark ring so we have considered two dark rings in the newton ring one is the nth dark ring and n plus p dark ring so if you want to write the equation for the diameter of n plus p at the dark ring it is going to be written as x times of d n plus p the whole square is equal to instead of n i have to write n plus p because we are talking about n plus p at the dark ring so if that is the condition we are getting this equation for diameter of n plus p at the dark ring so we have considered two dark rings in the newton ring which is obtained with the, this method one is the n dark ring and the second one is n plus p th dark ring now when we do the calculations using this two equation that is suppose equation one and this is taken to be equation two and if i subtract equation two with one we are going to write it as two minus one will give me on the LHS, we are going to get a term that is d n plus p the whole square minus d n square and on the RHS, we are going to get 4 n plus p 
r lambda minus it is written as 4 n r lambda as we expand this equation we get 4 n r lambda plus 4 p r lambda minus 4 n r lambda so we can cancel this terms over here and we are going to get only the remaining term has 4 p r lambda so the difference between the diameter of n plus pth dark ring and the diameter of nth dark ring will give me this ratio and this ratio is nothing but taken to be dn plus p the whole square minus dn square is equal to 4 p r lambda and from this case we can write the lambda has dn plus p the whole square minus dn square divided by 4 p r so this gives me the equation of lambda that is the wavelength of monochromatic light which is being used and on rhs we have two terms that is diameter of n plus p th dark ring and we have the diameter of nth dark ring p is indicating the term which we have taken that is n plus p th dark ring r is indicating the radius of curvature of the lens so if we are aware of each and every terms on the rhs we will be able to calculate the lambda value that means if i know what is the value of diameter of n plus p th dark ring and if i am aware of the diameter of nth dark ring so we can calculate the value of wavelength of monochromatic light which is being used and we can even plot a graph of dn square with re respect to n or versus n as we can see that as we have discussed that we are considering only two dark rings for the example that is n and n plus p so when we are plotting the graph dn square is the diameter of this nth dark ring and dn plus p is the diameter of n plus p of the dark ring so we can get the values of this two dn square and dn plus p the whole square and put this value in this rhs and get the value of lambda so this formula is useful for calculation of the wavelength of monochromatic light which is used in this particular experiment secondly when you talk about the calculation of diameter of the ring which is that is i'm talking about the newton rings which are being formed if i want to calculate the diameter of those rings we need to make use of traveling microscope but if you want to calculate the radius of different rings or lenses we need to make use of either mathematically or analytically lens equation or make use of an instrument called as spherometer so if you want to calculate the diameter of a ring that is newton rings it is going to be measured with the help of a microscope but if you want to calculate the radius of the ring we can do it analytically with the help of lens equation or we can do it with the help of instrument called as spherometer so next is the method of determining the radius of curvature of lens now obviously we have made use of a plano convex lens in the experimental arrangement of newton ring and if i want to determine what is the radius of curvature of that lens then we are going to make use of the famous instrument called as spherometer and when we look at the designing of the spherometer it is going to have the screw head at the top then we have the readings present on the scale that is you have a vertical scale placed beside it then we have one more surface which is present over here and when we talk about the circular scale this this is representing the circular scale and this represents the base circle of the whole instrument and obviously we have this has the center leg or you can say the middle screw and this too represents the legs of the spherometer so whenever we look at the instrument of the spherometer it has screw which is going to have head over here 
and the middle part present over here this is indicating the readings present on the circular scale this indicates the readings which are present on the vertical scale and this is the base circle which is used and these are the two legs which are taken to be the legs of the spherometer so if we want to calculate the radius of curvature of lens or anything we have to make use of the instrument called a spherometer because it is a very precise instrument used for the calculation of radius of curvature or you can do the calculation of radius of any objects with the help of spherometer now in this case we are calculating just an example radius of curvature of curved mirror is nothing but the radius of curvature of the sphere so if you want to calculate this radius with the help of spherometer you can obviously do that calculation and spherometer is used for the precise calculation of the radius of curvature and sometimes it is also used for calculation of thickness of thin wires or coils so this is one more instrument which we can make use of while the calculation or determination of thickness of thin wire or foil so coming back to our concept that is calculation of radius of curvature of the lens which is being used in newton ring that is the radius of curvature of the plano convex lens that is done with the help of spherometer and the formula which we get over here is r is equal to a square by 6h plus h by 2 now what are the different terms which are used on the rhs is nothing but l and h l indicates the distance between the two legs of the spherometer that is this indicates the l value and when you talk about h h is taken to be the difference in the reading when we place it on the lens as well as we place it on the surface so we get two readings when i place this on the lens as well as on the surface the difference which we get on the reading is given by h so if we calculate or if we get the values of l and h we will be easily able to determine the radius of curvature of the lens that is plano convex lens which is used in the newton rings method so these are the two methods of obtaining the wavelength of monochromatic light the first we did that and secondly we said that with the help of spherometer we are going to get the precise accurate value of radius of curvature and we can even make use of spherometer for determination of thick wire or foil so that's all for this video thank you so much